Welcome to the 65th installment of Tell Him Alejandro. You know one place for sports, cars, video games, fitness. If you're a man, you're here. Mr. Alejandro, I'm about to tell him. What you about to tell him, Alejandro? I'm about to tell you about the NBA Round 2 semifinals recap and the NBA Round 3 conference finals predictions. Tell him, Alejandro! Round 2 recap. Let's start with the Miami Heat versus the Brooklyn Nets. Brooklyn. I predicted that my Brooklyn Nets would win in seven games, and it didn't go anything like that at all. The Miami Heat won the series in five games, and I was crushed. Uh, it hurt me. It, it really was heartbreaking to have my Nets lose. In the fashion that they lost, they were extremely competitive. Game one, things got a little bit out of hand in the second half, mainly the third quarter. Ray Allen was just giving it to the Nets. But the Nets held their own. Specifically, shout out to Joe Johnson. Joe Johnson, I criticize him. A lot of people criticize Joe Johnson. He's the second highest paid player in the league. And Joe Johnson put in that work. He put him in the dirt. He earned his paper. He was going mano y mano against LeBron James, who showed up, especially in, I believe, his game four. He dropped 49 points, tied a playoff career high. He did his thing. Going into the series, I felt like the Nets would win because I felt like the Miami Heat would play like LeBron and the Cavs, where basically it'd be a lot of LeBron, and I didn't feel like the supporting Cavs would step up. I'm not trusting Dwayne Wade's knees right now. I've been on record saying when Dwayne Wade is healthy, it's a wrap. Ain't nobody beating the Heat, but I don't feel like he's healthy, and I felt like LeBron would have to carry the load, but it didn't matter. My Nets, when it came down to it, they were competitive, but at the end of games, down the stretch, they could not finish games you look at game four and game five those are two games that the nets easily could have won but for example game five in the last five minutes the nets went damn near scoreless that's unacceptable when you have joe johnson an offensive threat paul pierce paul peasy my knees an offensive threat and darren williams i have a lot to say about that young man but the nets held their own i'm proud of them it was painful to watch them lose. It really did hurt me. As a loyal New York, I'm loyal to the core. I was still tweeting ways that we could conjure up a victory with a few seconds left. But we had to take the loss. It is what it is now. Darren Williams for the Nets. I told y'all, if he does not show up against average players, Mario Chalmers and Norris Cole. Not that I don't like Cole and Chalmers, but they're average point guards in this league. If he don't show up against them, he got to go. Darren Williams... You got to go, buddy. This is New York. We don't play that. We're paying you $98 million. Game two, Darren Williams, guess what? He has as many points as me, as many points as you watching. Game two, he had zero points. What's going on? Game five, Darren Williams showed up, in my opinion. But game four, he had 13 points. Game three, he ain't really show up. It's like, yo, when you paying somebody the maximum salary, you expect the maximum production. And he's not producing for the amount of money that we're paying him. Now, he may have... Ankle problems, not may, I know he has ankle problems, he may require ankle surgery. If so, that would explain why he stunk. But yo, going into the summer, D-Will, I would trade him. It's not going to be that easy because who's going to want to pay maximum salary for somebody that's not really producing? Anyway, Paul Peasy, my kneesy, P-Dub, Paul Pierce, I think he's going to leave the Nets. I suspect that he's going to be a free agent and go to the Clippers because Coach Doc Rivers, once upon a time, coached him in the Boston Celtics. KG, Kevin Garnett, the kid, that's my man, but he don't got it no more, son. It's, a, it's finally a wrap. It's time for him to retire. Shout out to him on Game 5. He was coming up with some big rebounds. He had me hype. Shout out to KG. That's my dude. And when it's time for him to retire, you know I'm going to show him love. But I think it's a wrap for KG. I told y'all Joe Johnson showed up. Shout out to him. Shout out to the Miami Heat. They did their thing when, you know what I'm saying, adversity arose. They stood up like the back-to-back -back champions that they are and held their own. Shout out to LeBron James for holding his weight. Shout out to Chris Bosh too. Game 4, when LeBron had 49 points, no Heat was stepping up. Late in the game, tied 94-94, Bosh hits a big-time three-pointer, and that's basically what secured that victory and basically the series. So shout-out to the Heat. They did their thing. Let's go to the next Eastern semifinals. It was between the Washington Wizards and the Indiana Pacers. I predicted that the Pacers would win this in six games, and I was right. The Pacers won the series in six games. A lot of people said the Wizards would win because the Pacers are very inconsistent right now, but I just felt like... The Pacers would overcome. They've been through a lot this season. A lot of rumors, a lot of hoopla. And I feel like it's their destiny to go into the Eastern Conference Finals against the Miami Heat. And now they're living it. Shout out to John Wall, point guard for the Washington Wizards. John? Whoa, hey, he had a great season. 
He did not play good this series, but shout out to him. I like how he's grooming. He's definitely one of my top five point guards in the league, in my opinion. Check out the top fives coming up later on this summer, by the way. And shout out to Bradley Beal, young 20-year-old man. He played like great. I'm shocked to see how good he is so soon. He's a star in the making. I'm a little bit upset with Paul George for the Pacers. I had high expectations for him, and um, I don't feel like he's been living up to it. And uh, we're going to have to see because next series he's going to be dealing with LeBron James. So, uh, yeah, Paulie, get your act together. Roy Hibbert, he got out of his Houdini funk. But um, he was supposed to get out of it this series because this series against the Wizards, he was playing against big men, which is his specialty. Whereas the series prior, he was playing against big guys that were shooting and spacing them out, pulling them away from the hoop. So now I was expecting to see the Roy Hibbert that we saw. He basically kind of revitalized, came back to life, you know, kind of. Before he was had no rebounds, no points. Now he's, Roy Hibbert's putting in a little bit of work. That's a good look. Shout out to Nene Hilario and Marcin Gortat. Big men for the Washington Wizards. They put in that work. Shout out to Trevor Reza, former New York Knicks College. Your boy. And next series, we're going Pacers, Miami Heat. My prediction. Drum roll, please. I think I got to go with the Miami Heat in this one. The Pacers have looked very inconsistent all season. But the Heat brings the best out of the Pacers. So... I'm going to show the Pacers some respect. I'm going to say seven games the Miami Heat will win. I won't be shocked if the Heat win in six games. A lot of people say in five games. Don't do all that. This is the Eastern Conference Finals. It's going at least six games. I'm going to take the Heat in seven games. Paul George, though, if Paul George steps up and plays the way he did last postseason, who knows? And specifically Roy Hibbert. Roy Hibbert, when he goes against the Miami Heat, even though he's been looking poor this whole playoff season, when he goes against the Miami Heat, it's just a good matchup for him. And he just looks like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, straight up. So if Roy Hibbert could dominate, shout out to David West, by the way. West put in a lot of work in this Washington Wizards series. Luis Scola put in a lot of work. Scola! I like Scola. If PG, West, and Hibbert hold things down, that could definitely change the series around. But I do expect that there's going to be too much LeBron for the Pacers to handle. I'm taking the Miami Heat in that series. Heat Pacers is going to be an unbelievable series. I cannot wait. Stay tuned for the Western Conference.